good evening. good evening. And welcome to the ward meeting for 2 and 5. If you're not in 2 and 5, that's okay. You're still allowed to come in. Um, as you know, the ward meetings, this is a chance for us to listen to the residents. You get a chance you're, to ask your questions. We have all the department heads here. So uh, uh, that's what it's going to be about tonight. We'll have a short presentation from the city manager on the state of the city. And I think you'll hear some uh, good news. Uh, things, you know, for going back to 2014 when that company on uh, Broadway closed their doors laid off 1,100 employees. Um, things kind of were downhill. Well, now we can finally say things are moving in an upward position. We're not shooting up like a rocket. Things are going up. And we'd like that. You'll hear about more of that. And uh, after the presentation, then we'll get into uh, um, comments from, uh, from you guys. You know, if you have a, a comment, Critique, a complaint, that's fine. We want to hear about it. Um, we can't see everything going on. Um, we probably know what you're going to say. But we'd like to hear it from you guys because it, it means a lot more. But we also take compliments. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that uh, fishing for compliments. But these people behind me here work hard day in and day out. To do the best job they can for the city and if you like what they're doing that's why i say compliments are welcome because they got to know what they're doing is good otherwise how do you know if you're on the right track and and we'll take the criticisms and um, we'll we'll deal with those so i don't want to talk too long but i do have one little tidbit here from Frank LaRose, our Secretary of State down in Columbus, uh, he sent us a proclamation stating how many, with the census that we took last year, they have certified that Bedford now has 13,149 residents. We went up just a little bit, and I, I think that's good news. So I um, just want to introduce a couple people. Uh, you know, we have Ward 5, Jess, Jeff Asbury, and Ward 2, Paulie Janudis, and they'll get a chance to speak here in a minute. But, and then we'll get into a presentation by our city manager. But with that, I think we'll just get going and let the meeting take us where it goes. Oh, Wally, would you like to sure. start off with a few words? Well, welcome everybody. Oh, welcome here, because they're, they're recording, so... You can also watch this on the uh, city website. Should have worn a tie on <laughs> <Yeah>, TV. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, if you don't know, I'm Walter Chinudis. Uh, most people know me as Wally Chinudis, I suppose. Uh, people say, uh, which would you rather be uh, called, Walter or Wally? And I always say, well, all my friends call me Wally, so you decide who you want to call me. But... I, uh, I'm a lifelong Ward 2 resident, pushing 70 years now. And uh, Ward 2 has always, always been my territory, riding my bike. That was about as far as I got, you know, was Ward 2. Uh, my mother never dared to tell me that there was actually a waterfall on the other side of town. She knew me too well, so I didn't even learn about the waterfall until I was older. But... Um, I, I thank you all because I know that if you're here, it's because you really care. And um, that makes it worthwhile to, for everybody here working to, to know that you care. And that's, that's why they do what they do. Um, <clears throat> as the councilman, I'm supposed to have eyes on these guys over here, and uh, we're in, a, in the un upcoming weeks, we'll be going through all the budgets, line item by line item, make sure that all the tax money is spent well. So we try to keep eyes on what's going on. I have to tell you that um, I'm 
not necessarily a cheerleader, but um, in my estimation, the, uh, the departments here are run very well and efficient, and uh, I, I think that uh, Bedford's in a good place. We will, this is a unique opportunity to ask, express yourself, ask questions. This is your chance. You have all the departments here. You got the city manager, you have the mayor. And uh, this is a tremendous opportunity for everybody. Uh, we'll hear a great uh, presentation. Uh, I've heard it before a couple times, and I think <coughs> most of you will be very impressed by uh, the things going on in the city. So, um, and then after that, of course, you all get to ask your questions or make your comments. So that, that's the good part. So that'll be happening next. Okay, so well, here we go. Good. I Good evening, everybody. Uh, glad to see some familiar faces. Some faces aren't so familiar, but we'll get to know each other soon enough, I'm sure. Um, Council does a good job on these presentations. I attended the first two. And with Wally here, they go without notes. I can't do it. I just can't do it. So, I might have a couple things to say. Um, Jeff Asbury, your Ward 5 representative. Uh, I actually grew up in Wally's Ward. I grew up on McKinley. So I spent a lot of my time in the woods be between High Street and Wellman and at Taft Park. And uh, it was a great place to grow up. Now I'm in Ward 5. My wife and I came back about five years ago, bought uh, her parents' house in Eldred, where she grew up. So we both grew up here, graduated, got married here, moved away. Now we're back. So I think Stan made a comment that uh, at one of the uh, previous meetings that his last, he's not going anywhere. His last stop will be down there on Broadway. <laughs> I'll be either on Broadway or Bedford Heights because that's where my parents are. So somewhere in between, I'll make that last, last stop too. Um, I'm going to have to take my glasses off so I can see my writing. Um, I've spoken with, not, haven't had a lot of conversations with residents about issues. We have had some, and they're basically the same all across the city, all across the ward, all across our area in general. Speeding and stop signs. We know it's an issue. Um, chief and the, and the crew do what they can. I was an auxiliary for three years, so I know what they go through. Uh, you know, I could be sitting in a police SUV, Bedford police marked on the side of it, and somebody blows a stop sign right in front of you. Unfortunately, as, as auxiliaries, we couldn't do anything. Um, but you see it, I mean, the police, they do it in front of the police, too. It's, I don't know what the problem is with today's society as far as driving, but people don't like to follow rules and obey laws. So they're out there doing what they can, and I'm sure, I think the chief will mention later that citations this year are up 300% over last year. So they are doing their thing. There's just too many people that are breaking the law. Um, some other issues that we've, we've discussed, trash, uh, trash. Again, you can't dictate morality, you can't dictate people being good. There could be a trash can four feet in front of them. They're going to take their stuff and throw it on the ground. And it's not just kids. Kids learn it from somebody. So um, if we could all do our part, I police, you know, my area in front of the house, a couple houses. Um, if I see some litter somewhere in the street, I'll pick it up. I keep a package of plastic disposable gloves in my car just in case. We shouldn't have to, but that's the world we're living in. So if we could all do our part, that would help to clean up the neighborhoods a little bit. Um, we've discussed overnight parking and parking on lawns, illegal parking, I know that's an issue. Um, you can contact your council people about that if it's a repeat offender. And I know we've had some, site, uh, some letters going on in the mail to some people that constantly park on their tree lawn or on their lawns. And actually one does park in the tree lawn. Um, but they receive letters in the mail. The next step will be a citation. So if you, if you do see it, let us know. If it's something immediate, call the non-emergency number 440-232-1234. They never get tired of hearing, you know, uh, people call about their, their complaints if the law was actually broken. Okay. Um, some of the things that have been completed this past year in Ward 5. 
Uh, anybody that lives in the Ellenwood area, we know that the water line was replaced. Ellenwood was paved from Kenyon all the way down to Broadway. That looks great. Edgewood, that got repaved this year. Uh, there are some other streets in the ward that we know need, it, need uh, some attention, but that all depends on the budget. And Mike will be talking about Broadway uh, coming up in a little bit. That's going to take up a big chunk of change. So whatever we have left over next year, hopefully we can get some, uh, some more streets paved uh, around the neighborhood. Um, what else have we got? The city utilized some grant money. Uh, I don't know if you've been down to, to the square lately, but there's two solar charging benches uh, that they installed in the square with somebody else's money. That's always a good thing. Uh, they're currently in the process of installing two solar uh, electric vehicle charging stations, um, again with, with grant money, that was not out of our funds. Um, pretty soon they're going to be putting in some Wi-Fi on the commons and possibly being able to spread that all the way through the business district. Um, there's another, uh, I, I think you probably heard about the, the uh, Automile uh, funded some cameras on Rockside and Broadway. Uh, basically surveillance cameras that can be fed into the police cruisers uh, to help with crimes, any kind of crimes that would be committed, uh, accidents and su things such as that. Well, the Automile supplied us with another $50,000 grant and I believe that we're going to be putting some more cameras down Broadway through the square or through downtown into the commons uh, that shall help the businesses um, and the residents. We had uh, a minor break in uh, a couple months back at one of the little local shops, so this might, uh, might help deter that. Um, some things to look forward to next. Oh, let me go to this. Um, we had an issue late spring, early summer with the trains stopping on the tracks for extended periods of time. And we received several complaints about that. Council passed an ordinance uh, basically holding them civilly responsible with a pretty decent fine involved. Uh, that ordinance and, and letters were sent out to the powers that be at the train station or whoever is involved there. And I think the chief and, and uh, Mike Malice uh, for getting those out and it seems like it's done a pretty good job because I haven't heard any complaints lately I think it's been a couple months so hopefully we got that semi corrected at least some things to look forward to next year um, there's going to be some more events on the square hopefully some bigger better events uh, the Rec, uh, Parks and Rec Department did a great job this year on short notice getting the, uh, I don't want to say parties in the park, but their, their summertime concert series back on Wednesday nights on the square. Did a great job with that. Uh, movie night. So I'm sure we're going to be looking for some bigger and better things. There might be a little collaboration with the Historical Society. Keep your ears open for that. It should be a good event. Um, like to talk about uh, some of the artwork that you've seen in the city. The uh, mural, the underground mural, which was done two years ago. Um, and then, I don't know, that was last year. Last year. And the uh, mural on the back of the bicycle shop. If you haven't seen those, go take a look at them. Those were a collaboration between the Bedford Downtown Alliance, um, Heather Rhodes, and a gal named, named uh, Stami Paul from Graffiti Heart. Stami basically found the artists for the projects, and then between Heather and Bedford Downtown Alliance and the business owners, um, the uh, building that the uh, Underground Railroad building, uh, mural is on is Matthew and Lisa Stewart, I want to thank them, and the bicycle shop, of course, owned by Mike and Laura Hewlett. So it's a great collaboration. It makes our city look great. And again, there was no city funding. That was privately funded. So. Hopefully we can continue that in the future. Um, if you notice, if you drive through Twinsburg at all, they had a program through their recs, uh, park and rec department where they got some local artists together. And I believe Sherwin Williams applied some paint and brushes and uh, you know, the big silver electrical boxes at the intersections. They gave the artists some free reign to make those look pretty. 
So I'm hoping to do something like that for us next year, get some, some more colors, more artwork around the city, I think, and I think the mayor will about agrees, it looks really nice. So hopefully we can get that moving. Um, volunteers, I know the mayor's probably going to speak on it too. Any organization in the city needs volunteers. We can't put on events, we can't do things without volunteers. So whether it's the Historical Society, the Bedford Downtown Alliance, Meals on Wheels, Rotary, Lions Club, um, everybody needs help. So if you have a couple hours a month, whatever you can, please join us. Sign up. I'm sure we can have a piece of paper up here. If anybody's interested, give us your name, your email, your phone number, and we'll put you in touch with somebody that wouldn't mind putting you to work for a couple hours a month. Okay? It takes a whole community to put on these events, so we definitely need some help. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of the small, new small businesses that came in Award 5 this year. Uh, first one I want to talk about is Hell of a Deli. Hell of a Taste Deli right here. They took over the old big and little spot. If you haven't been there, they make some really great subs, wraps, salads. It's a really nice little spot. Um, they're not actually in Ward 5, but if you haven't been to Sweet Birdies, Cupcakes, Cookies, milkshakes, oh my goodness, um, and the ladies are fantastic. It's technically not Ward 5, but it's directly across the street, so I thought I would mention it. Um, so I have a theme going here, right? So we've got dinner, we've got desserts. After that, we've got Fitwise Cardio that just opened up, an exercise studio in downtown Bedford. So uh, once you get your dinner, once you get dessert, you can go down there and work it all off. And supposedly there's a cigar shop going to be opening up, maybe two we don't know we'll see about that um, speaking of small businesses I'm not sure if you've seen on the news or heard anybody talking about it but there's a lot of cargo ships with a lot of cargo that are stuck off of both coasts and they can't unload their products Christmas time holiday season is coming up and you want to buy presents for your people um, if you've noticed, some of the store shelves are starting to become fairly bare. So don't wait to buy your Christmas presents for me. I mean, for your friends, you can wait. Um, because you might not be able to get them. It's, it's looking really bad out there. Which leads me into <coughs> shopping downtown. Shop small. We've got some really nice stores downtown. Whether you want personalized items, you want records, you want candles, you want clothes, you want furniture. We've got a lot of things downtown where you can start your Christmas shopping there and maybe pick up some odds and ends of these big box retailers. So, you know, do what you can. See if you can if you can find something downtown. That would be really cool. And um, that's about all I've got. I want to thank everybody for showing up. We'll be up here afterwards if you've got any questions face to face. Have a great night. Thanks, Jeff. And Mike, I guess you don't have to do your presentation. <laughs> I didn't go into any details. I uh, want to just uh, introduce a couple people uh, from council. We have Board 3 Councilman Vic Fluharty is here, and our Clerk of Council, uh, Tracy Simons. So if you ever call into the council office, it's a young lady you get to talk to, and she's very helpful, I'm doing a great job for us. Um, I do have one sad note to, to point out that today we had a funeral for Nancy Lachowski who uh, passed away, it was a long, long time resident of Bedford, but as far as we are here in the city, she served on our Civil Service Commission for I think 35 or 36, 35 years, and uh, she was still serving up until July when she became uh, ill and she had to step down so uh, one of those people that lives in town that volunteered her time for 35 years to see that things get done right and I think if you look at the quality of our police and fire department uh, she did a great job on hiring the right people and uh, I just wanted to, to mention that in uh, Monday at council meeting we we're going to have a little tribute to her so I don't want to dwell too much on that and I want to get the meeting going, so, uh, Mike? Good evening.
evening, everyone. Real quick, and before I get started, there's uh, there's some booklets up here, and I I uh, am remiss that I, I forgot to share that at the first two war meetings. So, you guys are lucky if, uh, if you get a chance, grab it. It's uh, it's kind of like a good neighbor guide. We used to have this probably about 15 years ago, and um, we kind of remade that. Uh, there's some uh, information that uh, is in there. There's a a green piece of paper with some more updated information, specifically uh, Councilman Asbury's uh, contact info, and as well as everybody else's. But some helpful information, trash, open burn, different things like that. So if you get a chance, uh, grab one of those uh, on, your, um, on your way out. Real quickly, I just wanted to take a, take a minute before um, we really get into the presentation. Again, like the mayor said, um, this is a little bit of a snapshot of the state of the city. The state of the city is actually available online. It's on our website. You can go on there and see all of the slides. Um, this is a very condensed ver version. Um, this will also be uh, available via YouTube on the city's YouTube channel. So if you want to go back and watch this, you know, the eye up there is, is recording us and you can uh, take a look at that. And again, uh, kind of to piggyback off of what Mayor Kochi said to start, um, the things that happen, the things that we're able to accomplish are because of the, the men and women behind me. Um, you know, their hard work, um, their commitment, I, I cannot say enough. It, it's an honor to work with them each and every day, um, especially over the last 18 months. You know, things can be very easy to manage when things are smooth, right? Uh, things weren't necessarily smooth over the last 18 months. As everybody knows, I mean, there were some huge hurdles, huge challenges, um, and, and these men and women stepped up, and I appreciate that, and I know City Council appreciates it, as well as um, the residents. And I want to just introduce each of them uh, real quickly. We have Frank Ambosi, our Finance Director, Jennifer Holland, our Assistant Finance Director, Jennifer Kuzma, our Economic Development Director, Chief Marty Stemple in the Police Department, Calvin Beverly, our building commissioner. Clint Beller, our service director. Chief Dave Nagy in the fire department. And Aaron Fatch in our parks and recreation department. And I also want to kind of uh, give a uh, shout out to a couple others. Um, our assistant at the service department, Sean Francis, um, always does a great job, as well as um, Aaron's assistant, Mike Callahan. Um, as well as all the assistants, I have to say. Um, some of them have popped in and have been at the previous war meetings. Um, but that's, these are the, the men and women that get things done. Just a real quick, a, a little snapshot of how we concluded um, 2020. You can see we had 1.3 million as far in, in our uh, general fund cash balances. That's on top of the 5.4 that we have set aside in our reserves. Our 2021 balance, uh, our budget is balanced. Um, and obviously uh, continuing all the services that we've been um, providing. We built that, um, especially the cash balances, we built that up knowing firsthand what we were going to be facing this year. Um, and I, I have to give Frank credit, you know, when, when this first, uh, last February, when, when things really started to get dicey, um, Frank right off the bat was like, we don't have to worry about this year, we need to worry about next year. And we need to start planning for next year. That's where we're going to feel the impact of the pandemic. It, you know, as far as the unemployment and things like that, it's going to be the effect of this year. And, you know, we made the, the necessary adjustments. Um, and, you know, we had three primary goals. Obviously, we did get some CARES funds in, and those went to certain projects, you know, supplies, things of that nature, safety forces. Um, but in the early beginning of the pandemic, and I always kind of, I, I fast forward a little bit because um, it really showed the team that we had. Um, when I say fast forward, last summer, actually it was late last summer, the governor came out and he urged local governments, you have to put together your team. You have to have a team in place. You need to start making plans, preparations. There's going to be budget shortfalls. How are you going to help the, the public? Our team was meeting regularly every other day at the end of, starting at the end of February. So we were really ahead of the game. Um, obviously there's hurdles, there's things that we couldn't accomplish, but we really set out and had three primary goals. 
Obviously, the first goal was we needed to make sure um, we reduce the financial impact as much as possible, and we prepared for what we were going to face this year. The second thing was obviously maintaining our, our workforce. That was a priority, not only because we want to keep the workforce working, but obviously it's, there's a direct result. You trim workforce, you trim services, and trimming services was not an option. The third item was how do we help people? And, you know, we saw some very generous business owners. We saw some very generous residents. Um, we had, between a couple of businesses, they came forward right off the bat, and they donated $25,000. And they knew that uh, Aaron and his staff was going to be working to deliver food to anyone that needed it. They can go down to Ellenwood every other week. You know, we have a commodities program, but you have to meet requirements. This no requirements, it was going to be bi-monthly, you can see, it's hard to see in that picture, but that's the gymnasium filled with thousands of boxes of food on a regular basis. Now they took that money, they piggybacked, and they were able to get a grant, so we were able to do all of this without dipping into city funds. It was through uh, donations, grant dollars, and I, I just want to commend Aaron for that. I mean, really, you know, and, and all the staff, really helping the public. We. We had a, another uh, municipality actually reached out um, during the pandemic and they were asking about our website. And for those of you that don't know, we created kind of a COVID hub um, on the homepage. You could go on there, you can enter things in. Number one, it was full of information, all the updated information. But not only that, you could enter in um, what you need. If you were a senior and you needed laundry detergent, you enter that in, we get notified, we'll get it to you. We were wellness checks, uh, staff. I know Chief Stemple had um, some of his clerical staff, some staff here, as well as uh, Aaron's department, regularly calling seniors. There were some seniors that just wanted to be called every other week. There were some that wanted to be called every day. And they did that. Every single, you know, on that list, just to check in. What do you need? And really checking that box. And I, I just want to, again, I know I've said this, but I want to commend the group um, behind us for those efforts and make sure, make sh making sure we checked each of those top three priorities. So, well done. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. A couple of things as far as news and initiatives. You can see um, Tinker's Creek Commerce Park. I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit um, later. But um, you see our fire department last year, and, and thank you to City Council. Uh, for approving a plan to update our fleet. Um, we put a new engine uh, that went into service. I'm sure I'm going to get these wrong, so I'll just ask. May. May. Um, and you can see the, the price tag on that, $658,000. Uh, we also put in service a brand new squad, EMS squad, for $270,000. That went into service March. before, in March. Thank you, Chief. Um, police updates. Our canine unit, we now have two, four, two canine units. Um, that is a huge, huge resource for not only our community, but for our neighboring communities as well. I'm gonna uh, give a kind of a brief, actually, I'll, you wanna give the brief up, little story from a month ago, or I'll, I'll let Chief talk about it. It's a, a great story and a, a great resource. Sure, so uh, our canine unit that was working on duty at uh, this month evening was called for mutual aid to a neighboring city that was chasing a suspect that was armed, just committed a violent crime. And so our canine unit got there, along with a couple of other officers that we had on duty that we sent over there. And they located a suspect hiding underneath a car. And he would not show his hands, so they'd assume he still had a gun with him. So he would not show his hands after repeated uh, commands. So the officer, canine officer, gave the canine dog the command to bite, and which he did, and then the gentleman showed his hands right away. Um, but in a situation like that, when, when a dog bites, it's given a command to bite, it's playtime for him, because after all the repeated trainings, it's fun for the dog, so it's hard to get the dog to release. So the canine officer then has to give the command to release, or he's not going to let go. So our canine officer gave the command to release, and he did right away. So he accomplished the mission with minimal injury to the suspect, and no injuries to any officers. And um, 
that, that doc just did a great job, but it's just uh, one little snippet of how valuable those canines are to us and the surrounding cities also. Thank you, Chief. And that, that resource was made available um, through, uh, for those of you that don't know, a generous donation through the Bedford Auto Mile Association. They funded uh, our canine units. Also with the police department and um, again, um, thanking city council for the approval. Um, earlier this year, we actually went, um, I think it went live early summer. Um, all of our officers are now outfitted with body cameras and all of our cruisers are now outfitted with dash cameras. Um, very important. It's important for safety of the officers. It's important for the public as well. Um, so thank you for approving that. It was a substantial, um, a substantial capital investment. There's a lot that goes into that. Um, a lot of training um, and Chief Stemple and his staff did a, a tremendous job um, implementing that and, and rolling out that program. You see our infrastructure improvements, we, we've had some substantial, obviously on top of our road program, um, we've finally done Union Street, um, and that's a big uh, yay. Uh, that one, um, it's been some time. What we were able to do, and, and the county is, is uh, paying for the majority of that project, uh, the city did apply for, if you recall a few years ago, we did the water line. That was an old 1930s, 40s water line, I believe. Uh, we replaced the water line, knowing that that street was going to need to get done. Um, and then we applied for a grant, and we were successful, $320,000 for various storm improvements, uh, sewer improvements. Though that is getting done now, and then they'll be paving over top of that. So um, all things go well. Union won't be opened up for some time. Water's been done, sewer's been addressed, um, and Cuyahoga County will be making, uh, paving that um, in, the near, in the very near future, as you can see work is going on. Broadway Avenue. Broadway Avenue, um, we are, actually I'm going to skip over that, we'll, we'll get into more detail with that a little later. Um, you see Northfield Road, um, we are in communication with ODOT, um, there's a, some repairs that need to get made specifically to the bridge, um, the sidewalks, the fencing. Uh, they've been notified of that. They've actually been provided probably close to 100 photos. Um, we know they're gonna, it is in the plans. Um, we don't have a timeline um, for, or, for when ODOT is going to address that. But it is definitely something um, that we are staying on them for. Uh, and also, uh, a few years ago, we started a program as far as sewer maintenance. Um, you know, there's certain areas that we don't have the equipment to, to address. If it's regular televising, uh, root cutter, things like that. Um, and we've gone here and there when we run into a problem, we'll contract with Cuyahoga County and they have the proper equipment to do it. What we started doing about three years ago is we're setting a, uh, we have a direct line item in the budget and council supported this with $10,000 and we contract with Cuyahoga for regular annual maintenance to certain specific areas that we identify that should get uh, root cut and televised. Um, and we're trying to stay ahead of any issues. Obviously, when they televise that, if they identify something, then we know we need to go in and fix that before that small problem may become um, worse. So um, we're moving forward with that. As Council, uh, Councilman Asbury mentioned, you know, community groups. You know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna mention this again. We have outstanding organizations in town, but for the uh, historical society, uh, but for downtown alliance. Rotary, I know I'm missing some. These individuals, the Lions, thank you. <laughs> the Lions Club, thank you. Uh, these organizations, there's a, there's a lot of work that goes on to put on some of these events downtown and, and fundraising and things like that. Um, if you're interested or if you know someone that's interested, you know, again, these things don't happen by accident. Um, let us know, sign up. I know any organization uh, would be willing to, for anybody willing to help and volunteer. See some of the grant awards. I know um, the, uh, you can see some of the things that we've done in the past. Uh, our tree planting, we applied for and received grant dollars to plant 100 trees, um, which we did. We concluded that last year. Uh, we also applied for a 50-50 county grant. Um, that was put towards um, repairs to Egbert Road. Um, there were substantial concrete repairs that needed to get done, uh, and we utilized, obviously, um, 
Anytime we can use someone else's money, we try to do that. So it allows and frees up money for other types of projects. Um, I spoke about the Union Street project. And now I'm going to touch on Broadway. Uh, Broadway is, I think it was probably two and a half, two years ago, maybe a little bit more. Um, the mayor and our service director and myself met with ODOT officials um, about a number of topics. Um, one of those was Broadway, condition of Broadway. We knew the truck traffic increased with the I-271 project. We knew it was deteriorating. We had that data. We provided it. At the time, Broadway was not supposed to be resurfaced until 2027. Um, obviously, that wasn't really acceptable to us. Um, they had come back and said they were committing to uh, resurfacing Broadway in 2023. That would be fiscal year 2023, which means they will start in the summer of 2022, which is fine by us. Knowing that and knowing what we need to address, we're now in the, in the process of, I would, I would say within weeks, um, going out to bid for a substantial project throughout the historic district. We need to do some water line work um, throughout the historic district. We need to do curb repairs. Um, we need to do electrical upgrades. All of these things have to be done before ODOT comes through next summer to resurface. The last thing we want is for them to do the road and then we open it up because we didn't address uh, an old water line or um, some electrical problems. So um, what we did, we went out, went out for, for grant funding. We were awarded uh, roughly $300,000 to go towards that this year. Um, and as I said, we're going to be going out to bid for that project. It's probably going to be somewhere around $900,000. Um, that will take place this fall. It will most likely run through the spring. Our goal is to be finished by the time next summer comes and ODOT comes through. Uh, speaking of uh, ODOT, as Councilman mentioned, uh, that project is roughly, I think it's roughly $2.1, $2.2 million. And as of right now, they, ODOT is indicating our portion is 20%. Now that's negotiable. We believe it's negotiable based on some improvements that we've had to make over the last 20 years. So we're working to get that number down. Um, but you can see it, it's going to cost a uh, it's going to cost a substantial amount of money next year. Not only are we required to to take care of that percentage, um, we're also responsible for all of the handicap ramps on the sidewalks um, and all of that. Corp limit to corp limit. So. Uh, it's going to be a substantial project next summer. As we learn more, we'll share that. Um, I do want to mention one thing um, before we exit the Broadway topic. Um, we've had discussions, uh, service department, our city engineer, and, as well as safety forces, um, as far as when that work should take place. Um, they're going to need to open cut Broadway, curb to curb. Um, they're going to need to close Broadway for some time. We do not want that roadway closed during the day and we're going to be recommending evening hours for construction. It'll be less impactful to our local businesses. It'll be less impactful for traffic. Um, it'll be the evening hours, you know, possibly, uh, I think we talked about a 10 p.m. to a 6 a.m., um, which it'll be detoured down Willis. And again, there'll be more information coming out. Um, these are discussions that will be finalized when we have a pre-construction meeting. Uh, but that is what we're shooting for. It's going to be impactful. We're trying to make it as less impactful <laughs> as we can. Um, but it's a necessary improvement. And again, um, uh, it'll be a, a much needed. And, and it'll look very nice when completed. Just wanted to touch on real quick, we, we talk about uh, maintaining neighborhoods. Um, there's a second bullet there. You can see, you know, we would track vacant, foreclosed, or bank-owned homes. Um, when the housing crisis really hit, um, you know, we were probably 350, probably closer to 400 um, as far as bank-owned homes. Um, that has, and, and believe it or not, it, it's a lot. It is. Um, some of our neighboring communities were over 1,000, well over 1,000. Um, what we've seen in our most recent data is that's showing at about 150. So that number is coming down, which is a good thing. Um, and, and again, going after um, grant dollars to demolish properties, when we're able to do that, we will. Um, if it's residential, if it's commercial, um, I give kudos to Jennifer Kuzma 
Um, she was able to secure a number of different grants through the land bank. Uh, they most recently tore down the old property um, on Broadway, 591, the old animal clinic. Um, that was done. Um, Jen was able to get the county land bank to do it at no cost. It was a condemned building. And now we have a neighboring property owner looking to kind of expand their parcel, which is a good thing. Um, sometimes it's not, as easy, it's not as easy as it sounds. There's steps that have to be taken. Sometimes these vacant houses, you know, believe it or not, there's homes in town that are tied up, um, tied up in the, the courts and they got $60,000 in back taxes. So it's not that simple to just go and take a house down. But we will try, we will try to resolve it as, as much as possible. Touch on Zellia real quick. Um, for those of you that, that um, did not see the state of the city or the, the press releases um, just prior to that, um, they announced that they have now been given approval to manufacture pharmaceuticals again. And that's huge. That is a very, very big accomplishment for that company given what they were facing seven years ago. Um, you know, I, I remember state, state officials telling us that Nothing's going to be done on that property with a consent decree. I mean, it is, uh, this is a bad situation. And to kind of see it come first full circle is a huge accomplishment. Now, they're, they're just over um, 300 employees now. Um, they're hiring. Um, they're hiring. They're working with colleges to hire scientists and chemists. But they're also working with local school districts to hire kids that are graduating right out of high school. Operators, they they need they they need um, a whole range of employees. So for those interested, go to their website. Um, there's uh, some contact information, phone numbers. Um, they're doing great, great things. Kind of moving along, Meadowbrook. Um, you can see some of the things that we've had there. We have the new auto dealership. Number of different small businesses have gone in there. There's two additional that can't put on here right now, but they've uh, secured a lease that they'll be going into the small strips there. Um, the one thing we did lose as far as the pandemic, we had a company that was in the process of consolidating three locations outside of Bedford to one, and they were going to occupy the Walmart, the former Walmart facility. They're going to employ roughly, um, they were moving, I believe it was 65 immediately with a plan to go to 100. Um, they did construction contracts. Um, throughout the country. Uh, when the pandemic hit, about three months into that, they lost, I think it was eight of their 11 contracts. Um, they were not in a position to be expanding. Uh, the current owner of that property let them out of the lease, knowing this wasn't going to go in the direction, why fight this, why? He let them out of the lease, and now they're reshowing that property. So we're hopeful there's interest. Um, we've spoke to them actually as recently as last week, um, and we hope to see that filled. Another new company that, that came in and made a substantial investment. It's a small business, um, 20 to 25 people, um, but the investment in the community is huge. And they are BBG Inc. It's an insurance broker um, who purchased the former Mr. G's, and it looks nothing like a bar. Um, I won't say it, um, but knowing what he invested, talk about committing to Bedford, um, it's substantial. And, uh, Great businessman, very proud of town, um, goes down to get coffee in the morning. He's constantly um, praising the city, and it's good to see that. The Auto Mile we talk about regularly, and I, I know uh, Councilman mentioned um, at the State of the City, they provided, um, actually it was two checks. Um, they're more than just our largest, um, our largest employer collectively. Um, they're another group that is really committed to this town. Um, they provided the Bedford City School Foundation with, uh, Mr. Fluharty, what was it, $20,000, um, a donation to the Bedford City Schools Foundation that will go towards scholarships for children. Um, and then they provided a check to the city for $50,000. We gave them a number of different kind of projects we were looking at. Um, they totally funded that security project on Broadway and Rockside where the cameras were installed. They're directly fed into the cruisers. They've played a vital role in accidents, um, investigations, um, and as well as, listen, a deterrent, right? Um, if there's cameras up, you know, someone's hopefully will, will think twice. Um, 
they, one of our ideas at the time was to use that as a pilot program, and it's really worked well. And our thought was to expand that throughout the historic district as well as on the commons. You have, you know, the old Baptist church, you have the historical society, there's old buildings there, let alone we have our business owners um, with the small businesses. Um, and we'd like to in, in increase the security there. And that's going to be step one um, of how we'll utilize um, that donation. You can see some of the, the items here. Um, I talk about Tinker's Creek Commerce Park. Um, we are rounding third on this project. Um, I know for many of you it's, it's been roughly 30 acres that's just sat there with a, a for sale sign. Um, you know, and there's a lot that went into this, um, why it sat for sale. Um, there's a lot of debt tied into this project between Frank, <coughs> excuse me, Jennifer, um, our law director, really getting creative, putting our heads together. I have to say, you know, we have to commend Cuyahoga County. Um, they're a large lien holder on that property. They stepped up and we have interested businesses as well. Um, and if you've seen some of the most recent uh, council meetings, we've been passing legislation, um, development plans for that, um, as well as plans to authorize the city to take ownership of that property, um, which we're considering to do. Um, it's, it's vital that we get home on this because yes, there's potential for future expansion and attracting other businesses, <clears throat> but we have some businesses in town that you know, they're, they're stuck. They need to expand and they don't have the space. And if we don't get creative, we're gonna lose them. So it, it's just as important for business attraction. Business retention is just as important. And this is what we're looking to do with, with this project. So stay tuned. Uh, we hope to have some more announcements at the upcoming council meetings um, in the next couple months. Sorry about that. You see APEC Engineering, uh, another creative, um, creative deal that we did. We had a company that it was in Bedford, Mr. Barry. Um, he was out of space, could not find a, biz, a building that would uh, accommodate what he was looking to do. And we were at risk of losing him. Um, getting creative, Jennifer, Frank, um, we were able to acquire the former YMCA, and that is now being transitioned into an engineering firm. You know, the old pool's filled in, it's good. all the, the machine shop's going to be back there. Um, he's making another substantial investment up there. So um, kudos to our staff for getting creative, but also um, thank you to Mr. Barry for committing to Bedford. Uh, you see some of the other things that we've done, NOACA, um, actually I'll, I'll skip that real quick. Uh, public Wi-Fi was mentioned, um, a municipal pool facility, you know, we, we need to really focus on that. Um, I mentioned that because you know, we built that outdoor pool in 2007. We did just the pool for budget reasons. Pool house is still the pool house that was built in 1964. I think it was 1964. It's showing its age and we need to come up with some creative ways to address that and we're having those discussions now. Um, the, the, the pool facility is great. It's great for families, youth, seniors, um, and, and we need to make sure we obviously focus on, on some things that have to get repaired there. Um, you see, I talked about NOACA. Um, and we've talked about years now connecting downtown and the metro parks, and we want to do the bridge that'll go over Viaduct um, over the falls. Uh, we've been talking about that. Obviously, um, and you can see some of the renderings that we have here. It's a substantial project. It's, it's well over a million dollars, you know, and we need to get find, find grant dollars and get creative with that. Uh, one area of funding that is, is available is through NOACA. NOACA does things in two steps, right? They have funding for construction, but you cannot apply for that unless they award you a planning grant first. You have to go through their planning phase, and if you do that, then you're eligible to apply for the construction dollars. We've applied for the planning before. Uh, we were unsuccessful. We keep, went back to the drawing board. I, I have to say Jennifer went back to the drawing board. Um, and we tweaked some things, and we were successful this year. 
So we were awarded a, a planning grant through NOACA that we're going to be working on throughout the year. Um, into next year, it's about $80,000. Um, once we complete that, it opens the door to uh, construction dollars and applying for construction dollars. Um, there was a recent, I don't know if anybody saw an article, it was actually just over the weekend or, or Friday. Um, the Metro Parks, they got a huge award, right? A national award, you saw that. And one of the contributing factors was, you know, they have certain parks, their top 10, um, top 10 parks, the amount of visitors that they get. Bedford, I believe, was number seven. We have a million visitors a year, roughly. And that's a lot of individuals. We want to bring those individuals into town. We don't want them to just cross over Union down and head towards Richmond. Um, and that's what, that's what this project um, aims at, aims for. And we're going to continue to, to go after funding. Obviously, NOACA is not the only, only funding source. Um, but right now, it's going to be one that we really look at. Obviously, from a planning standpoint, you always try to keep looking forward, looking forward, and, and having conversations. And some of the conversations are way outside the box. What can we do? What, what can we do to, to improve? Um, obviously, I, I just touched on the Metro Parks. Metro Parks is you know, what, what is clearly one of our largest and, and our, one of our biggest assets, right? Um, the other piece is our historic district. And the amount of people that go to the, the, the commons and, and the events that are on the commons. You know, what can we do to expand on that? Um, you can see some renderings that we had. Um, actually, this was done about a, uh, a year and a half ago, probably. Um, and our plan was to discuss this last year at the ward meetings, just to start dialogue, right? Um, and then we had to cancel the ward meetings because of the pandemic. Well, here we're at again. Um, you can see some of the ideas that we were throwing around as far as expanding the commons, you know, having a, having a, a water feature maybe in the summertime, um, also having a, an area where individuals can come and skate in the wintertime and enjoy the holiday lights that our service department does, um, you know, another pavilion, really expanding the footprint of that. You know, this is not going to happen next year. Um, it's, we're not turning around spending $3 million to do this. This is merely to just start the dialogue, right? Um, maybe there's some things that people like, maybe there's some things people don't like. And these are things to discuss as we you know, continue down that road of really planning for that, you know, the next five years or the next 10 years. So um, we have some more of this. This can be seen, you can see a couple of uh, uh, the up close. If you're, if you're on our city's website, again, go to the state of the city. This is on the state of the city's presentation. And um, with that, we will take comments and questions. I believe the mayor is going to come up and go through that. And I appreciate it. I tried to go as quickly as possible. So I Thanks, Mike. And when we get to the comments, uh, what I like to do to try to be fair to everybody, take a question from one side, one from the other. One question per, first, per person to start with, and as we go on and run out of questions, and if somebody wants to ask more, that's fine. But uh, say you just want to start out with one question now. So I'll start over here. Who wants to make a comment? <laughs> of course. Um, I'm Georgette Dillon Brand. I um, was a preschool teacher in Bedford co op for 35 years. And, and have been a resident for 46 years. I came as a young bride to Bedford. Um, but funny, I still don't feel that I'm from Bedford. Because it's almost like if you're not born here, you're not from here. <laughs> and we give you 50 years. I'm <laughs> just saying, so I'm, you know, I'm waiting. Um, live in Ward 5 on Shawnee Lane. Um, my husband has been gone 10 years, but he worked for the Illuminating Company. And we, he was stationed, I don't want to say stationed, but placed in Westlake and Strongsville, the east side, and we never found any place that we liked as well as we liked living in Denver. And at 70, I'm in a split level down there, and I still don't want to leave. I just wanted to come, number one, to complain about the speeding, but everybody knows that that's going on. Um, but just to say thank you. Um, I'm very happy. I think the services are wonderful. I 
had a bunch of incidents where kids, we call it crimes of opportunity, they went around, cars were unlocked, and one of them was unlocked with the keys in it. But the kids went for a joyride, which they, they caught them. But, uh, lock your cars. That's, that's a very simple thing right there. And, and lock your garage doors at night. Um, but anyhow, I'll ask the chief about the crime statistics. For, for specific neighborhood problems, a good resource to look at is our uh, Facebook page, Police Department Facebook page, because oh. there's instances like that where. Um, Marty, can you use the microphone? A good place to check is our police department Facebook page, because uh, my deputy chief is real good about posting things on there that's um, current. If there, we have problems in certain neighborhoods about a uh, crime going on, he'll put it on there just like that uh, instance the mayor was talking about, a lack of car doors, we've had some break-ins here and here. Um, unfortunately, with the newspapers that have gone away, they used to have police blotters on there, and they would get our reports and post everything. So other than that, uh, just check social media, and you can always request if you see something specific in your neighborhood, you can call and ask. So we can share that information with you. Yeah, there's there's also an online, uh, it's called the Bedford Tribune online, that he sometimes uh, posts the uh, police blotters too. No, that was it. So it's just a Facebook? You just go on Facebook and search? The Bedford Police Department Facebook page. Bedford, Ohio, because there's different. Yeah. There's Bedford's all yeah. over. Always. Yeah. <laughs> or you'll get about 13 of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Mayor, yes. let me expand on that a little okay. bit. I know yeah. you asked um, a lot of people just aren't aware of what goes on in your neighborhood. So I just want to give you a little bit of information. So, like everybody else, we've had an increase in crime and obviously speeders. Stop sign violations, people are driving like idiots more now than ever. A lot of that is from the pandemic when everything was shut down. Things opened back up, everybody wanted to get out, and we see the worst end of it. Um, so um, our calls for service have increased. We're busier than ever. Uh, our major crimes, the violent crimes, have gone up. But I've stressed to my officers, I don't want to lose sight of the quality of life issues. So everything that's important to you guys in your neighborhoods, lot stereos, the speeders, the stop signs, we're still addressing it. And unlike some of our surrounding cities, um, they've gotten so busy that some of that stuff goes by the wayside and the residents suffer. Um, but again, I stress to my officers to address those things. Our citations and parking citations have increased 300% this past year. Our guys are out there doing what they can, um, trying to keep a lid on things. So, but I appreciate anybody's comments, specific complaints. I want to hear about it. And just a little bit of advice. If you see something going on, you have a problem happening, call right away. Call 232-1234. Because unfortunately, if you call our council people, even though they do a nice job notifying us right away, it still might have to go through two or three people before it gets to us, and then people are gone and we can't address it at that time. So, the quicker the better. Even if you think of something small, something suspicious, see something, say something, like that cliche, just just call, we, we want to know. Thank you. The, the, I just was gonna add one, one thing to that, or a chief, I don't know if you wanna mention it, about the direct result of Cleveland. Oh yeah. And, uh, this yeah, is so an interesting, uh, Stat. So, again, everybody's noticed that, that, that people are driving like idiots, people don't want to comply, there's pursuits all the time. Um, I don't want to point to any one specific instance, but a lot of this occurred after a few years ago when uh, Cleveland police had the Tamir Rice shooting, it was controversial, and that pursuit they got into where there were 100 police cars there and they shot to kill those people at the end. All that the Cleveland Police Department got put on a uh, consent decree by the criminal justice system. In other words, they were restricted on what they can do. And they basically have a no pursuit policy, and all the criminals quickly learn that. Cleveland police aren't gonna chase us, so we're gonna take off. So then everybody wanted to run from them. And then it bled out into the suburbs. So everybody 
wants to run from us, fight with us, not comply with us, and it just, we're still going to address it when we can. Um, we still pursue people safely, obviously, um, but we still want to get the bad guys and keep all you good people safe. Yes. I hate to bring this up a couple months early, but uh, walking down Broadway from like Southwick downtown in the wintertime is very, very dangerous because the sidewalks are done. And so uh, I don't know if the city can do something because that's a major thoroughfare. And the side streets, it's fine to just walk in, in the uh, road if somebody can't um, shovel their driveway. But Broadway is very dangerous with all the slush and the trucks going by fast. And anyway, I'm just wondering if something can be done with that, and if the city can help with those people somehow with a little plow. Yeah, we we had a plow years ago that I don't know who remembers the little bombardier that yeah. used to come down. <laughs> those those poor guys that drove those, they had shovels thrown at them swearing at them, stones thrown at them, because they, somebody would shove their dri shovel their driveway and they'd come by and put a little pile of snow on their driveway. And then in the spring we'd get all these calls, oh, you tore up my lawn, you gotta come fix my lawn. It, it was really a nightmare. But uh, the sidewalks belong to the homeowners and the business owners. It's their responsibility to keep them clean. <clears throat> Try to go out and I can tell you, we notify businesses, make sure you keep them clean because we've got people walking. Uh, you might want to expand on that. I was just going to say, we we've, uh, regularly, usually early in the season, we'll send out a friendly reminder, especially on the uh, throughout the auto mile. Uh, maybe we expand that a little bit and we try to let individuals know, listen, please keep the walk clear for pedestrians. Um, if there's a specific location, I know you mentioned it, but if there's a specific business or drop us an email or call us and we can, we can work to address that. And this is a great time to bring it up because it's early enough until wait until there's three feet of snow, so thank you. Uh, over here, yes? I'm a newbie. I've only been here 72 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my concern is the fireplugs on solar roads. I know the one in front of our house hasn't been touched in over 20 years. I saw them go by today. I don't know what they were doing, but I don't think it's a functional fire plug. Should be. Uh, we, we test hydrants every year, and actually we just finished our testing, and we, um, Attempt to hit every every hydrant. If after the meeting you want to give me the address, two ten. Two ten Solon Road. I will have somebody out there tomorrow morning to check it out for you. I appreciate it. No Thank problem. You. No problem. Over here. This is I just want to comment on and ask a question about the garage ordinance that you guys are working on. Um, I'm ashamed to admit I didn't know that that ordinance was there. Um, this specifically is the ordinance that says that if you have a garage that is condemned or falls down or is in disrepair, that you're going to be required to rebuild. And I think that if, they, if the city is looking at that, there has to be some way in these economic times that we look at the baseline income level of the individual that's impacted, the homeowner. I understand property values, but um, I think there are a lot of homeowners that whether it's $2,000, $3,000, or $9,000, that was commented that if there's a sign on center for it, a year's not going to do it for them to be able to pay. It's not. And it, it doesn't seem fair to me um, that we have properties that don't have garages, that are not, you know, don't have anything to do with that. They don't have to build one. Um, and there's, there seems to be the potential for an argument for disparate um, enforcement, since there are certainly properties that have had garages that have been gone that have they've got slabs and it's not been enforced against them. And I have I just have such a fundamental unfairness thought about that. 
I don't know if everybody knows that this is up, that, that it's being discussed. And just because it's on the books, just because we have the right to enforce it and amend it, doesn't necessarily mean that we should amend it by just putting in a time frame. So I think whether it's a city grant, whether it's grant money, um, whether it's, uh, I don't know which organization goes through and provides money to homeowners to improve their properties, um, that's a, that can be a lot of money to a lot of people who don't have it. Because I think if they had it, they probably wouldn't be dealing with, you know, the way it is now. Exactly. And uh, the, the ordinance, the garage ordinance says if your garage is condemned or raised, you have to replace it with a garage. Basically, it's like one sentence. Uh, we are, like you said, we're looking at it. We've had two or three meetings already. We're not even near deciding how we're going to do that. As we look at these ordinances, each little thing you do with it impacts so many other things. So we can't just say, tear it down, build a new one, like you say. In this economic times, and uh, you know, do, do they even need a garage? So many variables that go into this. We're not going lightly. We're checking other cities for their ordinances to see what they do, uh, just to get ideas. We're not going to just come out next Monday and say, here's the ordinance. Um, if it becomes necessary, we might even have a, a public meeting on it just to get input. To see, it, it is difficult for us. We're, we're even divided on council on which way to go. So any ordinance we look at is, we look at it thoroughly. We get into it and, uh, and uh, like I say, we're in the middle of doing that right now. But thanks for bringing that up because that's just another issue with it. And we're, we're cognizant of all that stuff. You just can't go and, uh, I had a rental house in Cleveland, a tree fell on the garage that wasn't being used, and uh, I had to, was ordered to rebuild that. But anyhow, so there, there's out there. We're looking at it to be fair, and we have not really pursued those that have been taken down to uh, say, hey, come on, you, you tore it down three years ago. It's Let's put it back up. We want to look at all that and be fair and do the right thing with it. It's it's a it's a tough job, and that well, that's what we get paid for. Study these things and not just make a, a blanket statement. Boom, well, here we go. And we look at some ordinances that were passed years ago, and we look at them. Go, well, what was that all about? At the time they did it, it was probably very relevant to what they were doing at the time. And you know. 30, 40 years later, you look at that ordinance go, doesn't quite mean anything. So yes, we are looking at it. The public will know more about it as we go before we pass anything. So uh, thanks for the question. Kelvin, do you add anything to that? I, the reason the mayor said, the reason they're looking at it is the day of the $2,000 garage is gone. Um, garages today are, are 10000 and up. So that's why council is looking at this ordinance here to see what they can do with it. Yeah. Thank you. Over here. Yes. Can you please explain to me, I'm a high street resident, and I have lived in the city of Bedford for 59 years since I was born. I just would like to know, can you explain to me the rubbish um, as far as Two family residents paying for the rubbish? Yeah. Um, so you were talking about the, the rubbish fee? Yes. The, the rubbish fee, the assessment for the rubbish is set by each, each residence, whether it be a, a single family, a double family, a three family, four family, they're assessed by the family, the individual residences in a unit. So everybody need, everybody is paying for their garbage, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, after $250. For the year, yeah. Um, for the year. I, think, I, I think it's 14 hours a month is it's what the assessment is. No, 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 no. You have an assessment fee for garbage. Yes. You have this letter here stating that... Oh, oh, I'll what happens is, is you have a two-family home. Right. I, I, 
revised code, you have to post and send certified mail to anybody who has a bill of $250 or more per household. So we send those out to you as a two-family home. You have twice the amount, which is $168 a year per family. So therefore, with you having a family or home that has two units, health units, you get charged twice. So that's $28 a month. Okay, and if you don't rent since 2018, then what? You can take steps to make that facility a one unit in place, and therefore not having it built into it. So you wouldn't rent it at all. You would make it so you can't rent it anymore. You'd have to talk to the building commissioner how to do that, and then you would take you through the steps of what you'd have to disconnect kitchen, disconnect things that could not then make it usable as a rental in the county. And it also is the county, so they have to coordinate with the county to make sure that they know it's a one unit versus two. <laughs> Over here. I got a little statement I'd like to read. Sure. Uh, my name is Robert Elliott. I live at 326 Solon Road. Been in the city 28 years. Uh, my lot is 700 feet deep and runs parallel to 332 Solon and mainline trucking's rear parking. I'm here to state my opposition to a second lot split on 332, which would directly contact my mowed and maintained backyard. My opposition is based on further devaluation of my property, based on line of sight, water runoff, dust, noise, and a view of broken down trailers and tractors and heavy equipment. I made several attempts to get information on the planning of this parking lot over the summer by calling Calvin Beverly. And when we did talk, he said that the line of sight would be addressed by code. I don't know what the code is, and I have nothing in writing. Uh, Calvin told me to submit an email or a letter asking for public records that was, and that was done. I have had no response. Last Monday, I sent a second email to Robin, and uh, there's been no response on that. I was informed after the fact that the Zoning Commission had met and approved the zoning change. I received no notice at my residence. A lot split was done, and a parking lot was built adjacent to my property in 2013. There was no notice of any kind and no zoning change. This impeded the safe use of my property for the purpose I purchased it for. 332 received a 20-foot burn across their property line. It was planted with scotch pine trees. I received an open ditch along my property line. The open ditch is dangerous to my grandchildren and my pets. I'm here to try to get an answer about whether there's plans in place for this lot split. And uh, I need them to seek representation on this matter if it's going to go the way it went before. Uh, Mr. Janudis has been out to see the site, and I believe he has a grasp of the damage this will do to me and well, my neighbor. Uh, it's devastating to me. And I've been in the city 28 years. So, Mr. Beverly? As far as your public records request, I do have the clerks working on it. Uh, we are down one clerk. We had three, now we have two. Uh, they still have the building department issues to address, as well as multiple other uh, public records requests. I understand that. Once all the information is collected, then it has to go to the law director's office for review before it can release it. But it is being worked on. Okay. No, I was just going to add to that. that Because I, I was copied on the request, and I know they're doing it, and it goes to the law director, and then he'll release it to you. So they are, they are putting that information together for you. Yes. Can I say something about We, and I, I spoke to Mr. Elliott about that, we agreed that in order to approve the zoning change, 
that there would be, there would have to be a firm equivalent to what he built in the back of the Hurtos property, the mound, of Scott Pines, and um, we agreed on it. I don't haven't seen it in writing, but that was to be that was a condition of the zoning change that he build a comparable berm. What happened with that, I would have to say, was very unfortunate, and uh, there are some in, uh, there are some ongoing matters concerning that that haven't been resolved yet. I think. Mr. Yeah, Austin, I just wanted to add something. one thing, and maybe I can get your phone number and, sure. and come out. I wasn't, I'm yeah. not familiar with what happened in 2013, uh, but if something should have been put there, absolutely. similar to before, we can have those conversations and we'll do what we can absolutely. do. Again, like I said, I, I wasn't familiar with, when did you? It was in 2013. 2013. All right, well, let, let, I, I'll, I'll get your phone you number out. and I'll come out and then we can. Yeah. I, I, I just feel like, I was abused. Yeah, I think that it would be. I don't want it to happen again. I think it would be prudent to go and take a look at what what's happening back there because it's one thing to discuss it and say the business needs to expand and this is really good and everything, but I think that if you see exactly what is happening, because he he'll be able to he built a parking lot in the back and that was zoned residential and I don't know if anyone even knows that. There was ever a parking lot there. I suspect no one ever did. I just suspect the city of Bedford didn't even know. Thank you. Yeah, and Mike, you let me know. I'll go with her. Take a look at it, too. Over here. Oh, yeah. Um, I just saw online recently, last day or so, that um, there was a write-up or something that said that is now more rental than individual homes or uh, homes, individually owned homes? Nope. No, that's, that's not. Anything about that? yeah, we, have a, we have a lot, but not that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not. I mean, as far as like single family homes, we're 40, yeah. I'm going to round up maybe like 4,400, somewhere around there. And I think rentals be. A few years back, we just crossed over to like a thousand, uh, but we don't have more single family rentals than homeowners. Yeah. Yeah. So, why? So, <laughs> that question has a couple pictures. Am I allowed to project on your little toy there? If you know how. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something we can take a look at. And if you're aware of that, 
No, I wasn't aware of that, and that's something we'll take a look at uh, as early as tomorrow. Can I show you the picture? Sure. back to when I was on Ward 2 Council, which was uh, in 2001, well now, we've requested that almost every year. In the that county... That's 10 years ago, Stan. Well, it's, no, that's 20 years ago. And the county keeps saying, well, it's not that bad, we'll, we'll check it out. They, they told us Union Street wasn't that bad, it didn't need paving, but we all know different if you ever drove on it. 
We request that all the time. Scan it's requested every year. Listen to the waste management trucks going up and down. Oh, I, I, I know, I know. They're responsible for the, the mess on Northfield Road where they stop <laughs> and all those bumps and tearing up Solon Road. Again, it's a county road and yep. we're, we're at their mercy. I mean, we keep telling them, you yeah, yeah, do something. And we spend a lot of money on that road uh, every year trying to patch it and make it usable. Um, but you know. How did that the nice that you Good question. Solon. Solon, yeah. They got Honestly, it. I, a couple of years ago they got it. Yeah. They, they did, but I think they paid for half. Yes. Yeah, the county didn't pay for all of that. I think they paid for, they paid for half. And not to, our stance has always been, if that's a county road, the county needs to address it. Cuyahoga County contacted us a few years back, and they said, we'll do union. You guys will pay half. Like, we got other roads we need to do. We're not paying half. So we we held out and we, you know, kind of dug our feet in and says, listen, we're, we're not paying for that road. That's your road. You know, we know we have to do some sewer work and things like that, but we also have all these other streets we need to maintain. Yeah. And when we didn't have a road program for however many years, we're kind of playing catch up. So we're not paying for your road. And we took that stance. And actually, it was... We had a conversation this year, and I don't want to say they were back and forth, but it was, you know, we reached out to them and said, what's the best phone number to put on the sign? Because we got a closed union, and we're going to have your phone number to call. And, you know, union, and not that we don't want to do that, but we also, Solon's going to be a big, you know, it's going to be costly, and, and we're not going to, you know, go through all of the four, five, six hundred thousand dollars that we have for our road program when they really should be looking at some of those things. So I think I'm not a hundred percent so don't but I, I, I think I think that the lights pay for half. Just to get it done. Yeah. I know I wanted to put up a sign on the Northfield Road that simply said uh, Northfield Road and Bridge is owned and maintained by the Ohio Department of Transportation and put their phone number. <laughs> but others said I probably shouldn't do that. One does a four by eight sheet up there. It's their road, their response, they need to take care of it. And when we met with them, they weren't real responsive. But I'm not sure how or why they picked my house, but I've become a dumping ground 
and I can't even walk out my front step. The sidewalk's completely covered. I got triaxle, quad axle dumps hitting the drive every morning, dumping dirt. Uh, the sidewalk underneath that has got to be destroyed. Uh, I don't know who to reach out to because they did knock on my door and say, excuse me, sir, but we're going to make this the hub of our activity and use your front yard as a dumping ground. Um, so I would appreciate help with locating who I would need to have this conversation. Well, I think we can help with that. Okay. My wife and I were driving by there, well, it cut up that way. And we thought, well, maybe they asked permission to do that because we're looking like, man, they're pouring it right up to your uh, yeah. fancy wall. So, uh, I'm fine. Wall. I charge rent because they're using my lawn and doing a thing about But, uh, yeah, I mean. They're allowed to use the tree lawn sidewalk area. Oh, this that's over. that's yeah, my I, property. I know exactly where you live, and I'm thinking, why is it? I, why isn't it? It's it's not it's no, I agree with yeah. you. They, yeah. They've really encroached on your property. It will be everything will be fixed and cleaned up, and I would guess within the next couple of weeks it would be done. Well, that's moving. a lot of work. I don't know if you've been by there. I mean, the thing was tragic. We lost all our tree lawn trees to a weird ice storm that hit early in the season. You probably remember that because there's a lot of damage as well. But that's a, a they will take care project. of it, and at this point, they're at the end, they're, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. That will not get done by the first snow, I guarantee it. I don't know. That's, that's anything, is, any, anything that's seeded, they have to hide your seed. Yeah, if it does not grow, they have, they'll come back in the spring and readdress it. Yeah, they have to. Yeah. So, uh, that's, I that's would still. appreciate whoever could give me the contact info, who the project manager is, the project though. I would like to have a conversation with them. Not the best. So, <laughs> that's, that's all I'm after. And, and we, we have a little bit of a hammer over them. If they want to do any more work in town, they got to fix these problems. Yeah, I mean, there's no other lawn in Bedford that I've seen them do this to. No. You know. Yours is the worst. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was just curious why you let them do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he did, they, just, they did inquire, um, while we're kind of talking about the median, they had reached out to, to Clint. You know, their next area that they're looking at is an area on Archer. And they wanted to start that now. Um, earlier this year, we told them, don't plan on starting yet. We need to see where we're at with this. They reached out, I think, to, to Clint a week ago. That's right. Um, and he says, you're not starting Archer. You're not starting that this year. Possibly March or April. This needs to get addressed. This needs to get restored. And then as, as, uh, as Clint mentioned, we, we have an inspector that, that's on site that is um, through our, our engineering company. Um, that they actually reimburse the cost of us having that inspector on site. Um, they'll have to, if there's any issues, they'll have to come back in the spring as well. So, in, in the areas that you see the, the straw, that's not final. They, as Clint mentioned, they have to hydro seed that. Um, so, so, if you're any residents or neighbors, they have straw down, oh, they plant it, that's not the final. That, that's not so, if a kid crawls up on that tractor or falls off and breaks his neck, that thing's on my property. Do I get sued? Well, we don't have our law director here to answer that. Well, I'm sorry, I got to worry about that because we got a lot of kids in the industry. And those are all open, you know, you can find it. All right, thank you. Well, yeah, people sue. They, anybody can sue anybody at any time for anything. Uh, Councilman Don Saunders just walked in a little while ago, and he's got to come in. Yeah, I just want to comment that you're not the only one. The corner of Woodrow and Adams on the Woodrow side is just as bad, and they park them there all the time, too, and they're encroaching on her property big time, too. So uh, the two of you are the worst. You are the actual worst. But she's not far behind from the big pot of gravel, sand, and everything that's getting dumped over there. Um. All right, I, I got a kind of a, a written question since they handed me. Um, I can read a couple of those. Some of them touched with the speeding and the stop signs and <clears throat> wild radios goes in with that, that you mentioned. Um, litter, masks, oh, the high school, the masks are being discarded. Okay. We need to check with the high school about that. Um, oh, squealing tires. Okay. That's, yeah, you know where I live on, on uh, Archer? It's a big sweeping bend that 
you can do 40 miles an hour and very easy. And when I hear tires squealing, I know they're going well above 40 miles an hour. Speeding just, it's a huge problem all over the city. Uh, we could, maybe we call in the National Guard and have them stand on each corner, I don't know. But people just don't care anymore. And that's, that's the sad part. Yes? They actually leave the burn marks. Burn marks, yeah. yeah. Square one of Walton Hills traffic camps. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, well, grass and leaves and streets, that's a, a good point. Uh, if you cut your grass and it blows in the street, you have to put it back on your property. City ordinance, grass cannot go. And don't wash it down the sewers because the grass and the leaves uh, just cause havoc down at our wastewater treatment plant and costs us millions of dollars. So simple thing is put it back on your street or on your lawn where it belongs. Uh, I always recommend people uh, mulch. Don't don't just blow it out. Uh, it's healthier for your lawns too. Uh, let's see. Snow plowers leaving snow in the streets. We'll go with the snow theme. Uh, they leaving it in the street. I don't quite understand. Okay, there's a big pile as they when they go by your driveway. Yeah. yeah well, that's the way the plows work. Uh, nothing we can do about that. No, I'm talking about plows that are taking it from the driveway. Oh, private plowers pushing up. Oh, I got it. I got it. Yeah. And again, they're supposed to push it out. Pile it back on your tree line. Um, or how, how about two houses down from me? Her plow guy plows it in their case the sidewalk. And let me tell you that, you know, some years it's this big and it just it's there in April. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's that's against the law, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I don't see. Yeah, and again, uh, the chief could address that with his officers. Yeah, the problem is they have to see this. If anybody stuff. sees that happening, you can call us. Yeah. You oh, see it happening, and we'll come down there and make them clear it off, or we'll say them. So. so is it who do I? But I don't see the I don't see the plow driver doing it, but it's it's there. So do I report the address and then contact her? You can, because then we'll contact the homeowner. We'll find out who their plow guy is and yeah. follow up. That's terrible. Yeah, Send a, a, a letter to somebody that has it and say, hey, you've got to notify your plow person that they can't do that. And if we find it, then we can catch that plow guy they can say, maybe a, maybe a forewarning could go out. And then, uh, well, trash pickup. Boxes are not being broken. Bottles and cans not washed, garbage is not enclosed, enclosed bags, so when dumped, wind catches it and uh, blows it all over the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, if you're using the recycle bin, you cannot put plastic bags in the recycle. Do not put plastic bags in the recycle because they just tear up the machinery that sorts all that stuff. Um, as far as the other stuff, use it a bag, yeah. I think most people take their trash out, put it in a bag, put it in, but nothing says you can't just dump your cans in there loosely. And um, I think I think some of these trash drivers now are getting a little lazy now that they have the arm to pick it up. And it used to be when they were dumping it by hand, they drop, they pick it up. Now, uh, very rarely do I see a driver stop and get out of his truck and pick it up. You I talked to Kimball about that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, yeah. it's a problem in just the way they dump them. Yeah. Another problem with if people put their uh, trash cans the wrong way, the wheels go toward your house. So when you, you dump them, the lid flops over and comes back. If you do it the other way, the lid goes into the can, yeah. and then as they lift it up, they just throw paper all over. So yeah. proper placement is one little solution. These are you know, good ideas and good comments that, that we will 
try to address as best we can and, and talk. we got to talk to Kimball about that. Yeah. Yes. Speaking of trash, can we still put large items like a, an appliance or a piece of furniture up? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Just like we used just to be put, able to? You don't have to call anybody. Just put it out in the regular collection bag. Okay. I think all the trucks, don't they have computers or something in them? Or, or yeah, they, they notify uh, a bulk truck. But usually any appliances, the scrap guys will get them before the rubbish truck does. Usually the garbage paper schedule before the trash can. It's Dan, we're on the phone Kimball Weekly. So. Pardon? We're on the phone with Kimball Weekly. Oh, so, yeah, they're having trouble getting drivers. So they're training new drivers. It, it's an issue. It's, it's like a concern, you know. And, and it goes back to when you mentioned earlier about the, the cleaning up and picking up by your yard. I know it's a mess if you got to pick up somebody else's trash that blew in your yard. One thing, we just picked that up throw back in the trash will certainly help make the, the neighborhoods look better and uh, maybe encourage other people not to make such a mess. Yes, in the back. My city tree is half dead. I got a lot of dead branches going over the street. The bark is half gone, so I'm sure the whole tree is going to go. Nobody ever comes around to check that. What's the address? Yeah. 559 Heather Lane. We'll have somebody look at it. Yeah, we, well, we're fortunate now, the last couple of years, we've got an arborist that works for the city. So. I have another He's busy. Question. Yes. The front of my house on Heather, the curb is almost completely demolished. I don't know. No. Well, well, curbs are usually addressed when the street's paved. On the what? When, it, when the street's paved, that's when the curbs get addressed. Yeah, it's it's hard just to go out and try to do one piece of furby. I know I had that by my house for years. And when the street got done, the curbs got done. Um, well, the other side is fine. I don't know why yeah. the front is uh, so deteriorated. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. I know there are some areas where the curbs are just gone, or the street's been paved so many times you can't see the curbs. Um, but we address them when a major uh, reclamation of the street is done, then they get done. If they just surface pave it, they're not going to get curbs. They, they shot it one year, they put tar and gravel on. Well, I remember when we tarred and graveled all the streets. I mean, I've been here for a long time, all my life, too. For a long time. Um, tried to get us out of here by 9 o'clock. Uh, yes, Doc? I'd like um, to address the um, housing market or housing stock. Um, is there a
I know Maple Heights has increased theirs as because for years they had one inspector for the city twice our size and he only did drive-bys because of the finance problems they were in. Which fortunately with Mayor Blackwell over there now she's she's got them out of that, doing a great job. And they're trying to do catch up now, that's why that. Um, we did have a housing inspector and then when we, we lost an inspector, uh, we didn't have that housing person come around. Then when we had our um, rental inspections, then we got sued in federal court that they were too strict. And we just explained exactly what we said, we want to keep our housing stock, our neighborhoods nice. And that got shot down in federal court. So uh, inspections are much tougher than they were because of that. And I don't know if you want to address that anymore, Calvin. No, uh, Maple Heights has a separate housing department and a separate building department. Uh, we don't. We have one department here and I have one full-time inspector. So we understand there's still issues out there, but we're, we're trying to manage and do it the best we can with what we have. Well, is there any thought to increasing our inspector, um, the number of inspectors that we do have in play here to maybe even have two or two and a half or maybe even three? Yeah, we, we would love to have more of everything. More police, more firefighters, more guys in the service department, more girls, uh, guys, gals, ladies. Um, and individuals. <laughs> well, even, when, even as a drive-by, um, I'm, not, I'm not making an official complaint by any means, but there are trees growing out of people's chimneys. And I'm just saying, yeah. I'm to take a look, but, um, you know, what kind of thing? We've been advertising for another full-time, we budgeted for it, another full-time inspector for over a year. We actually shifted, um, we, there was zero interest. We had it online, we had it at all of the local building um, uh, organizations that Mr. Beverly was at. Um, this is not, you know, the lack of interest is not just to Bedford. We're, he has heard this from other communities looking to hire if it's a plumbing inspector or someone with a residential um, license inspector. We've actually shifted to try to see if we could identify maybe someone looking for a part-time job that has some of those items. So now we're advertising for that. So we've, we've had it budgeted and we're trying to fill that position. I just, oh, go ahead. Well, I just have a comment. I worked for the city of Cleveland for 30 years. I worked in the building and housing department and talking to the people down in Cleveland, they're having the same problem as Bedford is having as far as trying to find inspectors and everything like that because of COVID. You're looking for an inspector's job? <laughs> send, send a resume in. <laughs> yes. Since the lawsuit, what power does the building department have? If somebody's got a Garage is falling down. You can't make a Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we do that. I'm talking about the like uh, point of sale inspections. And stuff. That's I mean, when we got a lot of houses brought up to codes. Yeah, what I'm getting at is what, what changed? I mean, I bought a house next door to me. I had four pages of violations. I had a face. That cost me some money. But then all of a sudden, somebody suits all these municipalities and they all give up. They all lose. We, we yeah. lost. We didn't give so, up. The thing is, what power do you have now? Can you tell somebody you got to paint that garage? You, gotta, you can't do that anymore. At exterior, we, we, we can address exterior and, and write an individual or write the property up for an exterior violation if we can see it. For instance, if it's a garage, if there's a concern that we can't get, we cannot enter someone's property. Okay, if a neighbor would give us permission to access their yard to see it and to take a photo, we will we'll do that. Um, but we can't just go on someone's property with, without that permission. Um, exterior, if, there, if it's a violation of the building code, we can write them up. I will say that often, and, and why things sometimes get delayed, we'll, we go out, we'll, give a, we'll, we'll send a notice. We give a second notice, we give a third and final. At that point, 
we issue a citation, and then, then it moves to court. And although, yes, we, we go or we go fill in, uh, give an update to the prosecutor, ultimately it will be between the judge and the property owner. Um, that's for exterior. Interior, we're not able to, to go inside the home to address those things unless there is there's certain items listed to where we would have to go in front of a judge, Mr. Beverly would, and we would have to uh, request a um, administrative warrant. And there's like 10 or 12 items where a judge would grant us the authority to enter the home to, to look at some of those violations. But other than that, we cannot say, hey, listen, we're coming to do an inspection in your home. It's, a, it's the property owner's right to say no. Yeah. What does that mean? What does the city do? So we don't go in the house? So, no. We, we, the we, we, ready to pull up. We, we are no longer doing the, the point of sales. As the mayor said, we fought that. Actually, when, when we say we fought and lost, there's a couple of things. We, we were sued not only for the point of sale, we were sued for the rental inspections. We were sued for rental registration. You know, it was primarily we were, we were um, there were uh, property owners that owned multiple properties that didn't feel they had to register the rentals, didn't feel that they needed to get those uh, inspected. Um, we fought for that, and we were able to maintain that. We weren't able to maintain the point of sale. So those rental inspections, we go through on a buy uh, and every other year basis, and we'll um, contact the property owner, we'll do a rental inspection. Do we have some landlords that are like, no, nope, not coming in my house. It, it, it's my right, you're not entering. It's their right. We can only enter if we feel, or let's say a, a tenant calls us, says the furnace hasn't worked all winter, you gotta help me. That would fall under one of those items that we can then go to the judge and ask for an administrative warrant. And if he grants it, then we can do that. If he doesn't, there's nothing, there's nothing we can do. Well, there's gotta be a lot of that. I mean, that, that was our argument. Yeah. Well, the, they had, we walked in the room and there was uh, four of us. There was at least seven lawyers sitting on the other side of the table from all different things. Um, one last question. Something you said earlier about if people are parking in their yard or on a tree lawn or whatever, and then you send them a letter and then if they still... Well, no, that would be know, like the, the chronic ones. Right. Uh, on my yeah, way here, I... They just give a citation when they're perfect, period. Well, it's when they have opportunity. Uh, Gene found what? When our officers see those, they do cite or leave a warning notice on the vehicle. Uh, normally cite them. Um, or if we get a complaint, our officers will respond and will address it accordingly. Um, what the mayor was talking about was... Uh, like a chronic uh, repeat offender or a homeowner, um, the city is going to send them a letter just to let them know that we're, we are addressing it and they're going to get cited if they continue their violation. Uh, we're we're going to hang out here for a while if anybody has some comments they don't want to stand up in front of everybody. But I want to give our uh, councilman a chance to give a final word here. So. Paulie went first, you can go first. Stuck, I don't have anything written down for a final word. <laughs> Aren't you? Um, thank everybody for coming out. It's good to see some faces finally. Um, don't forget council meetings too. First and third Mondays of the month. We'll be here next week, 8 o'clock. So, be good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for all the great comments. Uh, we have another one there that was on list that uh, was concerned about a uh, <coughs> note there's no longer a sign of Taft Park apparently that says you know, the park is closed after dark so I don't know what happened to this sign. Apparently it's not there. Parks are terrible. But those were some good comments, uh, some ongoing yeah. things, a lot of things we knew about. Um, I, I, I think the police need to be commended because you know you hear about a lot of these things happening and crimes happening, but you know what? If you follow up, you find out, by golly, they almost catch every single one. And that, that has happened in Bedford, and it's, it's truly a fact. 
Um, and it's amazing, I don't even know how they can catch these people, but they do. Um, something's ongoing that are not done yet that need to be resolved. And the issue that you have with the trucking company, you know, we have to remedy what happened with our workers there. So that's, that's something I'm going So I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. We'll find out. And other than that, thanks everyone for coming. And, you know, take my card. I'm easy to get a hold of if anyone has it. So thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. We had some good dialogues. And that's great because we learn from what you guys tell us too. So, like I said, we're going to hang around, but uh, you know, we got to get these guys home to bed so they can do their job. Thank you.